Welcome to the Prada Museum. We're here again a few moments before the museum opens to the public. In this room, which is on the map, it's number 72, and it holds the spectacular classical sculpture collection. We're here with our Wednesday sessions in English. This is a program that's sponsored by our members, and we thank them, members of American Friends of the Prada Museum. We encourage everyone to find out about our mission and our activity, and as well as that of our sister organization in Spain, the Fundación Amigos del Museo de Prado. And today I'm really excited uh, to speak about this very important work and to draw our attention to it. It is a sculpture from 50 to 25 BC considered named now a Dionysiac party. It is famous in Spain called the Altar of Christina of Sweden, and we'll talk about that in a little while, of its provenance and its road through, it, through its own life. Um, so this is a sculpture at a time for context that Julius Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC. So this is at that time period, and we don't know if it's its exact use. We believe it was an altar, but it's so highly decorated um, that we really believe it could be just a garden, uh, an altar to decorate a garden of a Roman villa. And the whole scene that decorates the outside of the cylinder is the Dionysiac party. And so Dionysus is the Greek name and Roman god is Bacchus, and he is the god of wine, of fertility, of agriculture, of growth, and of festivities, because he's the god of wine, and so there's a lot of parties around his figure. So this is the god here, and we know it also because of his staff. And the staff is also called a tirsus, and it's a staff that is one of his attributes. It's a, a, a staff that normally is wrapped with ivy and ha normally has a pine cone on the top of it, and it's one of his symbols. And here we have him uh, leaning on one of the Saturns. And next to that, we have Saturns who are part of his uh, followers. They are actually creating uh, a fire to roast and boil this uh, either suckling pig or boar, but you see that they're making the fire. It is going to be a feast of both eating and drinking. And they're in this uh, space here that are covered with trees, kind of like a sacred canopy, and skins that are wrapped together to create a kind of a sacred can canopy for this Dionysiac party, kind of creating a, a sacred mythological space with these columns that are the unifying element. As we continue here, we have the part of music of the party with satyrs, as we see they're satyrs because they have little tails, um, but they are playing flutes and have jugs probably of wine, and they're also below skins that are hanging and trees. And over here we have a figure that this is a Priapus herm. A herm is uh, also a sculpture, so it's a sculpture within a sculpture. Um, and he would be a figure of boundaries, but Priapus was also a god of fertility uh, related with Pan and of one of the related with this whole Dionysius uh, festivity, fecundity, fertility. And here, there's this ladder we see carved into the, uh, into the stone, of, which is marble. And we believe that the ladder would have been the, all of these figures that had used the ladder to create these beautiful skins that are hanging to create this sacred canopy. Oh, and we see the following column. And then this great figure over here, as we get closer to it, here's another figure holding probably a, um, a pitcher of wine. And 
kind of a sacred tree here that has these figures wrapping around it and dancing, like this figure with his back and has this animal skin is going around this tree, and this tree has grapes, so it's a sacred tree with grapes, and these figures are kind of whirling around it. But all of this beautiful sculpture, and then we get over here to the last figure that we haven't talked about yet. Here we have Pan with the legs of, of the goat. Following this figure, who even has a tummy, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> But this figure is Salinas, or, and he is supposed to be Dionysius's tutor. He's older. He's considered the most wise, the eldest, and the most drunken of all of the Saturns. But he, he's also the most wise. So here he is. He's kind of drunken and falling down, falling down and people are helping him um, and carrying him towards the god. And he's underneath this gorgeous, look at the skin here and the carving here of this animal skin. And Salinas had the attribute of, once he was drunken, had the power to talk about uh, prophecy and predict the future or give great wisdom. Oh, so he's a, he's a figure that's always in, many times in the Dionysian party. So anyway, this gorgeous piece. Everyone's here except for the Minids, Manids, which are the feminine uh, figures of the Dionysiac party, the followers, and the curator has greatly put them right here next to this piece. And they, look at those gorgeous reliefs, and they are also holding the Tirsus, the staff, which identify them as the Menads and followers of Dionysus. Okay, so this piece, made in sometime between 50 and 25 before Christ, at the time of Julius Caesar, and the two rivals that would have, or followers, collaborators and rivals in the political sense, uh, followers was Octavian, who would become Augustus Caesar, and Marcus, Mar Marcus, Antoni uh, Marcus Antonius, Mark Anthony for us, the great love affair with Cleopatra, Mark Anthony of the Cleopatra love affair, he and Octavius were collaborators and then rivals. and. At this time, we do know there's some reference to Marcus Antonius because he would have a party representing Dionysius versus Augustus was much more uh, Apollinian, following the god of the sun, of reason, of order, and he was, to differentiate himself, had a party of Dionysius. So that could have something to do or not. We don't know. But After the fall of the Roman Empire, this piece was, had disappeared, and we don't know where it was excavated or found or in what year, uh, but it was one of the great pieces that were rediscovered that give way to the Renaissance, what the, what the collectors and, and artists are looking for, of what's all of the excavations in Rome of the, of the 15 and the 1600s. And the first reference we have to this piece in the modern time was that it was in Rubens' collection. And a great legend had come up about it at that time, that it was the place where they held the ashes of Emperor Caligula. You know, so it was very exotic and, and a fascinating piece, which we know is completely untrue, uh, but it's what happened. It, it, it was part of the fame of the piece. And, the Queen Christina of Sweden, who had abdicated from the throne in Sweden and converted to Catholicism and moved to Rome, as, and who was a great patron of the arts and a great collector, she purchased this work and brought together a collection. And the, what's great about and the, her collection would enter into the Spanish royal collection. And it's really thanks to these collections that were formed if they got into hands of, of a great collector like the Spanish royal, royal collection, then they were settled and didn't run the risk of being separated again. And so I also think what's interesting in context is that this piece is part of her collection that the king and queen of Spain would purchase about 40 years after her death from her uh, follower collectors. Um, but it was also always with, uh, works that we've talked about before, 
the group of San Ildefonso, which is Orestes and Pilides at the end of this work. This also, this sculpture here with the fawn was part of the collection. Um, this great altar, this altarpiece, and also the other sculpture of the duodenum. So these works over you know, many, many works from Christina of Sweden's sculpture collection were brought together as a group and entered into the Spanish Royal Collection. And from there came to the Prada Museum in the 1830s and have been here together since. So it's a great inspiration for the artists, uh, great artifacts also seeing, you know, a 2000 year old altar and how the great sculpture level um, and quality of what we're seeing, but also to help us you know, know how these works inspired all of the modern artists. You know? So I wanted to draw attention to this room and to, this, to these works that are held here and their importance in themselves and in their influence. And so thank you very much for being with us again today. And we hope you visit this room and your next visit to the Prada Museum. Thank you again.